Stronger than ever, the Los Angeles Muslim community burst into the 70s as a leader and innovator in the Nation of Islam under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In 1974, the community hosted the Black Business Bazaar, which for the first time successfully brought together black-owned business from all over the city. More than 5,000 people attended the bazaar, which was held at the world-famous Shrine Auditorium. Of events such as the Black Businessmen's Bazaar, in terms of the black community and working together with the Nation of Islam, what are, you, what are the implications of such an event? Well, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that black people have to come together. An event like a bazaar would show black people who have doubts and reservations about whether or not they should unite with black people and follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This shows black people that black people can come together and do something together among themselves without white people. This shows that black people who is in business, that black people do have something to sell their people. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that we should not only be merely the consumers, but we should be the producers. And this is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad went to work and brought in fish from Peru to show us that we have to be the producers, not merely consumers. And this shows black people when we come to such an event as a bazaar, and when black people turns out to such an event as a bazaar, this shows the world that black people can come together and buy from each other. And the world want to believe, and this is the stigma that the white man placed on the black people in America, that the black people will not come together and buy each other goods. But, uh, but you can see today that's other than the truth. What you see in Los Angeles is a sign of the growth everywhere in America. In New York City in May, we had the largest gathering of black people who came out to hear a word from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. 70,000 black people on a cold day in May came to hear the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Just last um, Sunday, Sunday before last, 40,000 black people in New York came out to hear the word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We have 30 to 40 businesses in New York. We have, now we're opening up 40 fish houses in the city of New York. We have four universities of Islam in the city of New York, and now we're going to put the college level on our University of Islam school system in New York. And this is happening in Washington, in Baltimore, in Philadelphia, in Boston, Massachusetts, in Atlanta, Georgia, in Chicago, in Cleveland, in San Francisco. This is going on all over the country. So Los Angeles, you know, a great city under its great minister, Minister Abdul Kareem, is a great prime mover. It's a great um, in innovator. But Los Angeles is just a sign of growth that you will see in every major city in America. Wherever you find a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you find him working, working, working to ensure the survival of the black man in our crucial time into which we have entered. By 1975, the Los Angeles Muslim community had established itself as a mainstream part of the African American culture. The next bazaar, called the Black Community Fair, attracted more than 10,000 people, including numerous celebrities and politicians who just wanted to be a part of the festivities. I'm pleased that so many prominent people from the entertainment world are here today joining with all of you. I'm pleased that the black community has come together on this occasion to prove at least two principles in which we're all very much interested. One principle is the fact that if we are to demand respect for ourselves, we must first have respect for ourselves. Right, right, right. We must first love ourselves. Right. Because if we don't believe that we're somebody, nobody else will. That's right. And the second principle is that time has come when a unity of effort is necessary in the black community if we're going to succeed. That's right. 
No longer can we be permitted to divide ourselves, to pit ourselves against each other, to have suspicions or doubts about one another because of the nature of the religion or the community in which we live or the particular style of life which we follow. That's right. Time has come for all of us, Muslims and non-Muslims, right. to recognize that together, only together, are we going to be